Thank for the privilege of being here today for Salatul Jumu'ah. And we know that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who gives his servants the will and the ability to be at any given place at any given time. And we know there are some amongst the servants of Allah who were given the will to be here but not the ability. As a result, they're not here. And others were given the ability but not the will. And as a result, they're not here. So we thank Allah for giving us both the will and the ability to be here today for Salatul Jumu'ah. And we know that this is a privilege that we cannot ourselves take responsibility for. For it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who blesses his servant with tawfiq, with the ability to worship him. We began with a report, Abdullah ibn, uh, ibn Amr, he reports that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he walked into the masjid and he noticed two groups. And one group was engaged in ibadah, in prayer, in dhikr. And another group was engaged in the exchange of knowledge. This was a circle of knowledge where the ignorant were being taught by those with knowledge. The Prophet Sallallahu telling his compa companions the difference between these two groups. He says one group, the group that is engaged in worship this group of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may answer their prayers or he may not. But this group over here in which the learned people are teaching the ignorance, this is the group that I want to sit amongst because I came here as a teacher. I came here to teach and thus the Prophet ﷺ chose to sit in that circle of knowledge in which information, knowledge was being exchanged. The Prophet ﷺ, he, many times, on many occasions, he talked about the superiority of knowledge, even over other acts of worship. And he himself was sent to teach. Allah mentions in the Quran, كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا رَسُولًا مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَيُعَلِّمُكُمْ مَا لَمْ تَكُونُوا تَعْلَمُونَ That Allah reminds us that the Prophet ﷺ was sent from amongst us, from amongst the people. And he came to teach them. He came to purify them. He came to teach them Al-Kitab, the Qur'an, and teach them the hikmah of following his sunnah, or following his direction, utilizing him as a role model. And he came to teach them that which they knew not. You see, the first campaign was not make salah. This was not the first campaign amongst the Muslims. The first campaign was not perform hajj or even pay sadaqah, charity. But the first campaign was iqra, read, read. And you know what pains me when you hear, especially the community, some things being said about the community. For example, if you want to hide things from a black person, put it in a book. This is a shame. And we have to realize that we're Muslim and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his first campaign was Iqra. And he waged war against ignorance. He waged war against ignorance. As an example, the prisoners of war, the Prophet ﷺ saw that some of them didn't have any money 
to gain freedom. So he allowed them to teach some of the other companions for their freedom. He allowed them to teach them how to read. And this is important for us to really reflect upon that the Prophet وسلم, one of his dua that was a gift to him from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbi zidni ilma. Allah increase me in knowledge. And when the Prophet وسلم, received this gift and he made that dua, he never stopped learning. He never, his knowledge never decreased from making that dua. We have to look at the times that we are living in, where it's almost the obliteration of books. Everything has become digital. You can put 500 books on one little machine, or ploy maybe by shaitan to get rid of books for us to stop reading. When we turn on our television, these shows are interesting, and we have to admit it. These shows will cause you to rush during your salat to get back to that TV. And it's very difficult to stay away from these shows. We want to see what's going to happen in the next episode. What's going down? It was drama in this episode, and they gave us a clue to what's in the next episode. Really occupying all of our time with ignorance. And we have to realize that being a Muslim, as we always say, we have to learn our deen. And once you learn your deen, keep learning your deen. And relearn your deen. Always learn. Always. What books are we reading at this particular moment? Are we educating ourselves? Because garbage in, garbage out. The garbage that we place in ourselves from watching some of the, this programming is going to manifest itself some way. Whether you're driving, you're going to hear something from that TV show or from a, a record that we like to listen to, it's going to manifest itself some way. And we have to look at these dua that the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made, Rabbi Zidni Ilma. Also, Audu Billahi an Akuna min al Jahileen. As Musa alayhi salam, he made the dua to say for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, seeking refuge in Allah to protect him from being amongst the ignorant. Protect him from being amongst the ignorant. Musa and Khidr were on a boat. And a bird came down and landed on the edge of that particular boat. And the bird took in some water with, it, with its beak. And Khidr, pointing out the occurrence of what just took place, and Khidr saying that the amount of water that has been taken by this bird is in comparison to my knowledge and your knowledge, talking about Musa, and also the knowledge of mankind is compared to that of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possess. And this is important for us to know that when we learn, the more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. And we have things that have occurred in our community and communities all around is that a person gets a hadith or an ayat of Quran and they floating around the masjid and you can't tell them nothing. And that's the result of stopping from of preventing themselves to continue their studies. They got a piece. They got a piece. They got one side of the story. And now they become an authority. And we have to make sure that as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that all this knowledge that is possessed by mankind, there's still more with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the knowledge that we think that we possess is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the will and the ability to possess that particular knowledge. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want you to know that, you would not have no, known what you know. And this is important. This is a point of humility in our community. Is that we can never stop learning. We can never stop learning. 
The scholars have divided knowledge into different categories. So you have ilm. Al Hassan he mentions that ilm is of two types. Al ilm bil lisan. This is knowledge on the tongue. It's a superficial utterance of the tongue. How many people can quote hadith? How many people can quote ayahs of Quran? But at night, you have to be careful of them and their behavior at nighttime. And they don't, themselves do not apply this particular knowledge. So this is when it's a superficial utterance on the tongue. Then you have ilmul nafi, which is beneficial knowledge. This is knowledge that affects the heart and it changes the heart. And this is where we have to become a community that when we learn something, we try our best to apply it. And that the knowledge is not just an utterance on the tongue, but it's actually transforming our hearts. Transforming our hearts. The worst person is the person who can quote and sound be so beautiful when they quote. They sound, they use beautiful quotes, but they themselves do not apply what they know. This is the worst person that we do not want to become a community full of hypocrites. Sometimes we listen to a, a, a khutbah and we learn new things in the khutbah or perhaps it just is a reminder. But it's a shame when we leave the khutbah, some of us leave Islam. Some of us leave the deen altogether and we're not applying what we're learning. And when the person no longer feels that they don't need to learn anymore, like we said before, you enter into an early grave. Because to live is to grow. To live is to grow. And constantly learn from mistakes. When you make mistakes, you learn from it. It's an opportunity for you to learn. But if we make mistakes and all it does is produce a bitter individual, then perhaps we didn't obtain the mercy that was meant for us in learning that particular mistake. So ilm is into two categories and ignorance is into two categories. One category, jahlul basit. This is simple ignorance. This is when you don't know something and all you have to do is be taught that thing. And it cures that particular ignorance. Simple ignorance. But then you have Jahlul Muraqab, compounded ignorance. This is the dangerous type of ignorance. When you are ignorant and you don't know your ignorance, when you're spitting out quotes and information as if you know when you really don't know, this is compounded ignorance. This is ignorance on top of ignorance. Ignorance on top of ignorance. And it's important for us to realize some things that we don't know, even in our experiences in life, is always an opportunity for us to learn something new. Always an opportunity for us to learn something new. As an imam, imam doesn't mean the most knowledgeable. Imam does not mean a specialist. If I make a mistake, this gives me an opportunity to learn. So you all have to approach me and give me that opportunity to learn. But if information is just put amongst each other and we just continue whispering, and we feel that the imam doesn't need to learn, we're not going to grow as a community. All of us in this room have to humble ourselves and realize even in growing this community, this is new to all of us. This is new to all of us. And none of us have just the blueprint on how it's supposed to be done. You see, the problem is a lot of times when we are not in a position of leadership, we always have this theory on how it's supposed to be done. He should do it like this. She should do it like this. Now imagine if you are in that position, we don't know what decision we would make if we were in that person's shoes. And that's why it's better to be humble. It's better to be humble and realize that people have to learn many times. And sometimes 
we are in positions where we end up criticizing. You see, I didn't develop even respect for our past leaders, such as uh, Imam Muhammad, and some of the leaders who came before us, some of the names that we mentioned before, Elijah Muhammad, Marcus Garvey, until being placed in a position of leadership. Now I have utmost respect for them. I have utmost respect for them. And we have to realize that none of this is easy, being whether you're a leader or a follower, both has to learn. And both has to have some capacity to lead. And both have to have capacity to follow. If a person just wants to lead all the time without being able to follow, this is a disease. This is a disease of the heart. And a person just wants to follow all the time without never taking the responsibility of leadership, this is also a disease. So being able to be balanced and know that every opportunity is an opportunity to learn. When you stop growing, and the scholars say that perhaps the root of all diseases is when the person becomes content with themselves. No concept of I, uh, I'm saved in Islam or I've arrived. It's no, no one has arrived. No one has arrived. And we have to realize this, that we are always learning. Continue learning. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this is what he taught the people. Inni u'alimuka kalimat. He told a young man in front of him, I shall teach you something. Can I teach you something? Ya Vulan. He was constantly teaching people and learning from people in the community. We have to be students. We have to go back to being students. Do we realize that it was Muslims who opened the first university? Farawiyin and a woman, Fatima al Fihri, a woman opened the first university. It was the Muslims who had the first hospitals. Go study some of the, the lands that we have bombed Iraq and Afghanistan. Some of the best scholars have come out of those lands. And look at how we look at them, those nations today as being backwards and ignorant. But the Muslims known for having libraries, having volumes of books, these were the Muslims. Harun al-Rashid, first modern style hospital. The Europeans would take their sick to Christian monks to get prayed over. The Muslims were taking their sick to hospitals for prayer and procedure. And we have to look at the importance of the Muslims using water, using paper, using paper before Europeans. While Europeans were in the Dark Ages, the West was in the Dark Ages. It was the Muslims. We need to study about the Muslims. Timbuktu, Sangha Mali, Mansa Musa, Abu Bakri. When we, we memorize this stuff in school, in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. I still remember this stuff. And we have individuals who sailed ocean blue and discovered this land before Columbus. Abu Bakri the second. But when we're ignorant, people can exploit us as a community. We are easily exploited. We are easily taken, taken advantage of. We are easily ruined and manipulated when we are ignorant. And this, for our community, is not acceptable. We have to increase our circles of knowledge. We must have more classes. We can't accept just being a social community. Of course, there's going to be time where we're going to have fun, and we're going to party in a manner that is halal. But we have to increase our knowledge. It's terrible just hearing some of the stuff that I've heard of late. Hearing the promiscuity taking place in our community. Brothers approaching the sisters without going through their wali. You should be ashamed of yourself. Brothers not having respect. The beautiful women, the women of status in society, they always have protection around them. But when individuals look down upon sisters and don't respect sisters, they go directly to the sister without going to the wali. But this is a result of ignorance. And perhaps, perhaps, 
We know, but we are unable to apply our knowledge. And we are no longer directed by our ill, but we are directed by our passions and desires. Haven't you seen one who takes as for worship their passions and desires, their hawa? We have to change in the community. It can't be a party. Party time is over. We're trying to build a community. So in the weeks ahead, inshallah, we're going to hear reforms for our community to protect ourselves from ourselves. To protect ourselves from ourselves. We have to have increased circles of knowledge. More people have to learn. We are not going to come in here and be exploited. What happens if something happens to me, someone can come in this door and speak sweet Arabic. And they don't even have to know what they're saying. But in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. <laughs> So those individuals, the people, will begin to listen to that person. We have to be individuals. We have to step up the bar and begin to learn a lot more and not be girt around and directed by ignorance. And in closing, I close with two examples. There was an individual during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi And the ayah was revealed, which talked about that eat and drink up until... The white thread, Khaytul uh, Al-Abyad, is distinguished from Khaytul Aswad, is distinguished from the black thread. This individual took it literally. He took a white thread and a black thread and placed it under his pillow, waiting for them to be distinguished from the se themselves, from the, uh, waiting for the white thread to be distinguished from the black thread. And the individual went to the Prophet and told him, we have an issue. They weren't distinguished from each other. And the Prophet Sallallahu he had to laugh about that particular situation. And he, he told him, he gave him the explanation of that. Don't take that literally. As a matter of fact, you must have a long pillow for those long strings to be under your pillow. A person making decisions out of ignorance without consulting. You have a community now where you can consult, we can consult each other. You have some learned people in the community where we can go to them instead of making decisions out of ignorance. In another story, there was an individual during the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he was injured during war. He received a head injury during war. And he had fell asleep and during his sleep he had a wet dream. And upon waking up, he went and asked some of the companions how does he deal with that particular situation they gave him the advice of making ghusl. And he ended up dying as a result of making that ghusl. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam found out, he said, curse them. The cure for ignorance is asking. <coughs> the cure for ignorance is asking. <laughs> that never, never can opinion, never does opinion have the ability to overcome truth? Opinion can never substitute truth. If you don't know, ask the people of remembrance. If you don't know. Brothers and sisters, the message today is, is that we have to step up our standards in regards to seeking knowledge. Muslim that seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim, man and woman, women and men, we have to, and our children. We have a school we're trying to build. We have to have, be a more intellectual, more educational community, more educational uh, programs. Our program last week was a very beautiful program. For our young people, they have to be able to sit down and hear the narrative of our elders. Our young people have disregarded the narrative of our elders and we're not learning from history. We're not learning from past mistakes and, and learning from past uh, successes. So sit down, listen to your elders. Sit down, let's become a community that begins to listen and talk to each other a lot more and be open to learn from each other a lot more. Let us stop rushing. Don't rush to the grave. Don't rush. 
Relax, be patient with one another, and be patient, and know that we all have to learn. Seek knowledge from the cradle to the grave. وربنا أتينا في الدنيا سنة وسنين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. We're in a culture where an athlete is celebrated over a scholar.